morning. Come on in. Big group this morning. So that, you know what that means, right? You have to sing extra loud to make up for the empty seats. Yeah, okay, right? You got to sing extra loud. Right. All right, let's um, let's stand and pray, and then we'll get started. Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you that the sun is shining once again. Thank you for this gorgeous day. And thank you that we can come together and worship you. You deserve it uh, more than we're able to give. You deserve more. And Lord, we just want to thank you and, and love on you and try to return our adoration to you this morning for, for all the things that you do for us, for who you are to us, most importantly. We ask that our praises, our worship would put a smile on your face and please you this morning and that you would know that we're grateful for you. Lord, we ask your blessing on this service and this worship. Even in YouTube videos, we can still knit our hearts together and worship you. You're already here in the room with us. You're with us online. Lord, help us realize that and enjoy the moment. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so we have some YouTube videos and worship, and basically we're just going to go from video to video. Uh, some of them have lyrics, some of them I couldn't find lyrics, so do your best. All right? Sound good? Sounds yeah. great. Thank you. 
want to share something with you real quick. And I think it's a, an encouragement that God wants every one of us to hear. He knows I need to hear. <laughs> There's a... I don't know if you can sense it, but it seems like to me... Um, more and more every day, I get a stronger sense that there's something at work that convinces me that the Jesus in me is not enough, like I don't measure up to truly reflect him. And on top of that, no matter where I go, whether it's in this building or at the gym or on the highway, it doesn't matter. There's this nagging voice that says, I don't belong. And I don't know if any of you get a sense of that or you feel it. But I'm telling you, it's like it gets stronger and stronger. And I, I had an epiphany this morning that <laughs> God's saying, listen, that doesn't matter. You belong to me. Amen. Amen. So no matter how you feel about whether you belong or not, or if you're good enough or not, no matter where you are, no matter who you're with, you're mine. And that's all that matters. And I was back there writing it down because I thought I was supposed to put it in my notes on my sermon, but you want to be open with it. Close your eyes right now and hear those words. He wants to say them to you. You're mine. You belong to me. And it's not like this possessive, like hands off. It's a reassurance. It's a, a an extra infusion of life to give you hope to say it doesn't matter what's going on around me. It doesn't matter where I've been, things I've done, things I've said. It doesn't matter the environment I'm in. I'm his. And if you could begin to speak that over your own heart and mind, whew, how would that shape your day? And not in an arrogant way, but in a genuine Jesus, I'm yours. I give you my heart. I devote myself to you. And that's all that because I gotta tell you, that other voice, you can look at me now. That other voice, it's only gonna get louder. Until mm. you're done sucking wind, it's not gonna stop lying to you. He wants you to listen to his voice. Amen. Hear him say, Be mine, I love you. I've got my best. Yeah, let's go. Go Bills. I mean, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, Jack, if you bring the <clears throat> slides up. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. Hey, did you happen to see how uh, the Miami Dolphins did last week? Anybody watch that Bills Dolphins game? <laughs> Squish the fish. The Bills players had some sushi down in Miami last week. I know you're not saying anything because you got beat by them. Good for them. Okay. <laughs> on, a, on a more serious note, um, please be praying for Peggy's mom. She's been still struggling with some health stuff. Uh, I think they've kind of figured out now some source to the problem, so they're helping her and treating her. So hopefully she can get back to was it the nursing facility right in a couple of days on rehab facility which is where she needs to be, um, at least for now. And just pray for Peggy. I mean, she's juggling a lot, trying to take care of her mom and hold down a job and all that stuff, right? So keep her in your prayers. Peggy, we love you. We're praying for you. 
All right, this morning's message, work on our image. How many of you have, uh, you got a good grasp on your image? Linda's, she's confident. She's gutsy enough to say, do you, do you realize that every single human being has investment in their image? Good or bad, right? They, listen, you don't leave the house without checking the mirror, do you? Anybody that anybody leave the house without checking the mirror says, "No, okay, well, you look in the mirror." John, you don't look in the mirror. That Come on. Can't be true. <laughs> I mean, you want to borrow this, buddy? <laughs> well, I'm not going to fix my hair. <laughs> you don't need to. It's perfect. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> we all spend a good portion of our day, some of us more than others, doing this, don't we? How do I look? How am I going to present myself to the world? Keep it around me. Even if you don't leave the house, you still do, don't you? Like, I've had those days on a Monday where all I do is watch war documentaries and never leave the house. I still look in the mirror and go, oof, I ain't going anywhere. <laughs> right? <laughs> Right? Oh, come on! Nobody? All right. Yeah. I guess I'll just start preaching then. But here's the deal about that. I think it's created in us for a reason. Does anybody think that way? Like, it's human nature. We don't look presentable. Even the, even the times when I'm looking in the mirror and going, whoa, where'd that come from? streaks up there. You still are wor you're worried about it. You still want to, hey, wait a minute. i got to put the best, the best face forward, right? You're worried about your image. I think it comes from God's creation. James 1, 22 through 25. We're going to start with this one because it mentions a mirror and it's something that James taught because it's important to human nature. We're aware of how we look and present ourselves to the world around us. Some of us care more than others. Some of us care too much, right? That's good or bad. But James says, and he ties us back to holiness, living for God, basically proving that you are belonging to Jesus to the world around you. James 1, 22 through 25. Be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourself. So he's saying, basically, don't just listen to good sermons, even though this one might not be. you got to do what Scripture says, right? It's not good enough for you to just know it. Many of us are guilty of knowing a lot of Scripture, but we don't necessarily put it into practice. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror, which many of us do. And I'm getting to the age where, you know, tweezers are a must. Start plucking hair coming out of my ears. And I'm not going to be gross, but some of you fit the category. You know what I'm talking about. Right? looks intently at his face in the mirror, for he looks at himself and then goes away and once forgets what he was like. How many of us do that? No. We leave the house and we think, yeah, these are good pants. I need to wear these pants today. They make me look good. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. Do you see the analogy here? James is saying, listen, back up what you believe by actually doing it. Right? The world's biggest indictment of the church and Christians is what? We're all hypocrites. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we preach a good game, but yet we don't show up and do it. Probably less than we ought to anyway. I don't think it's completely accurate. It's just the fact that the world has then convinced everybody else, 
Hey, those people that say they follow Jesus, they aren't going to do it. It's just they don't see it. <laughs> they don't see it on TV shows or movies or any of the things with the media that we would normally look at. But we know, we try to do it, right? And nobody's perfect. But I think James is getting to a good point here. Don't be like the guy who's just like, man, I look good. And then you go out in the world and you realize, wait, I didn't brush my teeth. Malachi. <clears throat> I love you. He brushed his teeth. We have to hide him. He's saying, do it. Image is important. But what, what work are we putting into our image? Is it all just about good clothes and nice haircut, cheap sunglasses, it's easy top reference. A couple of you got it, thank you. You're still awake. What should we work on? Listen, image is important, why? In a right light, it's because God created us in our in His image, right? Genesis 1, 26 to 31. We're going to chip off the old block. Anybody ever hear that? Plant corn, get corn. That's a saying in our family. When Malachi acts like I do, Sarah's like, plant corn. Right? We're, we <laughs> reflect where we came from. Genesis 1, 26 to 31. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, meaning, whoa, check it out. It was very good. So at the end of the creation story, you can debate how long it actually took, a full week or maybe eons described in a week. The truth is, God created the earth and everything in it. So he did a lot of creating. Right? You think about just driving from here to New Bedford. There's a lot of creation just in that little strip of map. Then think about the whole world. All the ecosystems. Every living thing. Every human. Seven billion plus now. Right? Think about seven billion versions of of God's image. And there's some ugly versions. We can all be honest. We've seen some ugly people in our lifetime. Now, right? And we've seen some gorgeous people in our lifetime. But guess what? Even in this room, it doesn't matter. We're all in his image. That's right. So then it makes you think like, whoa. Okay. Okay. Well, how, how am I supposed to relate to that then? How many times have you picked this up and said, Ugh, I don't like what I see? Doesn't that put a little more weight into how we view ourselves being creations of God, being a version? being in his image. If he values us enough to give us breath in our lungs, maybe we ought to value it. Listen, every human being is guilty of negative self-talk, negative self-image, negative self-thought. That doesn't come from God. See, God created you in his image. Yes, even this extra appendage. We should value his creation in us and ask him what we're to do with it in the world he's placed us. See, it's not enough for us to just have a good image and be presentable. We actually have to do something with it and represent him with it. See, when you look in the mirror, what do you see? I'm starting to see this guy over here more. Unless, well, I never really looked at that guy. 
right? I mean, we all think about your life. If you've had faith in Jesus, whether it was you made that devotion last week or it was 30 plus years ago like me, think about how he's forged his image in you. Good, bad, ugly, where you are right today versus where you were back when you first met him. Are you more like him? I can almost guarantee we all are. Are we perfect? Let's move on. <laughs> of course we're not perfect. Of course we're not perfect. I don't know, but I'm pretty close. Sorry, <laughs> God. Don't shrink me down. Here's the thing about having a good and healthy image is it depends on who we're imitating. See, he wants us to be an imitator. What's that old saying? Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Anybody ever heard that before? Anybody else have a younger sibling, cousin, kid in youth group that just followed you around, did everything you did, talked exactly the way you did? Like, I had cousins like that, and it was annoying. But if you think about it, they looked up to you. They wanted to imitate you. That's how we're to approach our following Jesus, right? We heard of that in scripture a lot, don't we? Imitate Christ, right? It doesn't mean be perfect. It means try a little more. Put a little more oomph in it, a little more effort. That's the whole meaning behind devotion. It's not to suddenly arrive and say, I got it all together. We never will. This side of heaven. But if we put a little work into our image, every day. We can imitate him hopefully better today than yesterday and the day before. Third John chapter 1 verse 11. Beloved, beloved, do not imitate evil, but imitate good. Whoever does good is from God. Whoever does evil has not seen God. Isn't that interesting? When we think about image, and reflecting and imitating Christ, if we try to imitate good, it proves that we've actually seen his image. First Corinthians 4, 14 through 16. I do not write these things to make you ashamed, but to admonish or encourage you as much as my beloved children. For though you have countless guides in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. I urge you then, be imitators of me. See, we don't imitate Christ and avoid doing. We learn who Jesus is by what? The people around us in our life, right? Think about the person that led you to Jesus. There was something about them, right? Yep. Even if at first they ticked you off, like what happened for me, there was still something that was like, Dr. Wetterall, you've heard my stories about our family doctor. What a quirky, weirdo guy. But there was something about him that was like, wow, he talks about Jesus like he actually knows him. That's weird. I want that. Right? Be imitators of me means Paul is admonishing these folks in the Corinthian church. Hey, listen, you saw my example. You saw how I was changed and transformed by Jesus. Imitate me. There's tons of teachers out there, right? We live in a world, even in a Christian world, where we can latch on to podcasts and videos and Bible curriculums and TV preachers, radio preachers, anybody. There's a million examples of how to follow Christ. What Paul's saying is like, listen, when it really comes down to it, imitate the people you've seen imitate Jesus. It's easy to listen to somebody who's got a crowd of 15,000 on a TV show who preaches good words every Sunday. But have you really seen them imitate Jesus?
Jesus. I'm not knocking those folks, but maybe put a little more weight into imitating the people you know That's right. and love that show Jesus. That's right. First Corinthians 11.1, 1, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Hebrews 13, 5 through 8. Keep your, free, your life free from love of money. Be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Verse 7, remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So Paul's talking to the different churches here in these different books about imitation. That it's important for us to follow people who say they follow Jesus. But I think on the flip side of that coin, it ought to make us a little sober about how we follow Christ and imitate Christ. Right? Because there will always be somebody looking to us to say, hey, how does this Jesus thing work? It's amazing the good and bad that comes out of my awesome son's life, word and deed, when I say, oh my gosh, he's just like me. <laughs> right? How many of us have had children or we've emulated our parents and we think, man, my dad used to say that, my mom, right? We've all had those moments. There's something created in us for imitation. And I'm not talking about the foamy version of imitation. I'm talking about trying to emulate something, someone you admire. That ought to make us all feel a little more sober about, am I worth imitating? And I gotta tell you, there's a lot of days where I'm like, uh, no, don't do what I say. <laughs> right? We all have those moments. But the beauty is, is if we keep trying to imitate Christ, we'll get better at it. We'll become a little more that person who's worth imitating. You can go to that next slide. See, scripture, the Bible shows us the image to imitate, right? And trust me, there are parts of the Bible where I scratch my head and think, what in the world am I supposed to get out of this? But if you stick with it and you keep looking at scripture and you keep reading about the nature of God and all those interactions with characters in Israel in the Old Testament, all those crazy wars and battles and people sinning and being messed up, you see a theme roll through there of love, mercy, grace, and forgiveness. And then when you reach the New Testament and you read through all the interactions with Jesus healing people, setting people free, showing them they have value, you start to put the picture together of what to look at and say, do I measure up? And that's not a negative. It should be a motivator. So when you look in the mirror, you can go to that next slide. Do they see him in you? Next week, um, we're going to have a special guest, the owner of Vagabond Fitness, where I work out, Kevin O'Malley. He's going to come and share about Guardians of the Streets. And they are um, got a nice little group of people, and they started their own 501c3, and they do outreach to the homeless two, three days a week. And then they're running supplies and 
stopped at a bunch of the shelters around the South Shore. They're women's shelters and uh, halfway homes and, and homes for people coming out of addiction because Katie and Kevin both come out of that lifestyle and they want to get back. Just a bunch of people at the gym. Some of them follow Christ, some of them don't. I just am enamored with the fact that they have pooled so much resource in the last six months to bless this area. People, that most people will try to look the other way when they see them. And they're out there. 95 degree days this summer, they're out there passing Gatorade, doing sandwiches. A bunch of those moms that work out in the gym go into their kitchens when the kids are dropped off at school or daycare and start making sandwiches so that they can have stuff to take down. He's going to come share this next week. And um, I have been struggling since I took the summer off. I came back to the gym. And of course, you, many of you know when you stop working out, you can't just jump right back in. Ouch. It's getting worse and worse the older I get. So now I'm like trying to get back into the groove. But it's funny because that encouragement that I spoke over us this morning is where I've been feeling and where I've been at. Because when I go to the gym, people are nice enough. As far as New England folks go, we all know that, right? Yeah. They'll say hi, and then maybe. <laughs> but it's like this feeling that comes over me. I go in there and work out, and a couple of the trainers and I are pretty close friends. Um, but it's just like, I don't belong here. It's like they've got their own little cliques and all that stuff. And I've talked myself over the last month, I've talked myself out of going to the gym every day I go there. And it's funny though, not funny, it's more poetic, that that word that God gave us this morning is his answer to me wanting to quit. It's more than just working out. It's been that way since I started in February of 2016. Are you showing me to them? Or are you just showing you to them? And there's a responsibility now that I'm really having to wrestle with. Like, okay. I'm letting my friend Kevin come speak next week. Hopefully, so it will influence all of us to keep doing this. Showing Jesus to people. Because he's showing Jesus to people. That whole group is. Some of them don't even know that it's Jesus trying to do it. Kevin does. So anyway, I just pose that question to you. All the areas where you feel friction, where you feel like, I don't belong, where you feel like, I don't even like these people. That voice is there for a reason. God wants you to know you belong to him. So wherever you are, you belong. It's his world. His universe. You don't have to be the crazy Bible thumper guy. But you can be the loving person in that environment. You can be the smile and say hello when they don't. <laughs> That's tough. That's we can't escape this stuff. And there's there's times that we think we can just ah uh, it's just gym life. When I get to the church, then I'll start worrying about the sermon on Sunday. And God's like, hey, you dope. What do you think you're doing at that gym? <laughs> Maybe you should prioritize praying over your time at the gym. And how you represent me at the gym more than you do sitting and putting a nice sermon together. Right? This is the real stuff of being image bearers of Christ. Are we showing him to the world around us? Well, if we put the work in, we get enough 
days stacked together. First Thessalonians, Paul starts to paint a picture for us of a group of folks that figured it out. Turn with me. First Thessalonians chapter one. Two through eight. Paul's writing to the church of Thessalonica. He says, We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. That's a lot of adjectives to talk about a group of people, right? For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that he has chosen you. Because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit. So that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. I think that's how you pronounce that word. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere. So that we need not say anything. Paul opens a letter to a church he planted and helped get going. And they got the gospel so <laughs> impactfully, they just started doing it. And in such a way, they became famous for being imitators of Christ. And he closes up this first statement by saying, we don't need to teach you anything. Won't we? You figured it out. Isn't that amazing? I mean, could you imagine? Would would he say that about us? I think we figured out quite a bit of it, right? How about us individually? Would the people who've mentored us say, "Good job. You figured it out." But listen, if we stack enough days working on our image of who Jesus is and in us, there's hope. That's what the scripture is giving us is hope. And oftentimes I feel like the church does a pretty good job at conviction and making you feel like you don't measure up. We need to get rid of that voice. That's not Jesus' voice. He wants to encourage us to keep fighting the good fight. Right? There is hope. Someday somebody's going to say, Wow, Nathan, you've come a long way. I can't even believe it. The Jesus in you is remarkable. Wouldn't that be cool if somebody said that to you? Well, it takes effort, doesn't it? It means we can't let one day go by without working on our image. Colossians chapter 1. We need daily checkup. Right? We don't look in the mirror of scripture every day and say, ah, am I really doing that Galatians 5 thing? Am I showing fruit of the Spirit? Or are my apples rotten? <laughs> Sorry about that. Was funny. Colossians chapter 1. 15 through 23. He, speaking of Christ, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is, he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. 
and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Verse 21, and you who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. We have to stay tuned into the source, right? Jesus is in the process of redeeming all things to himself, all of creation. It's not just us sitting here like spectators saying, oh, I wish you could fix this broken world. We can ask for it, but we better put our hand on a shovel and get to work right. helping him do it. Right. That's the importance of us bearing the image of Jesus. He's included us in the mission. I think, this is my opinion, but I think scripture backs it up. The mission won't get completed without us. That's not a self-important statement. That's a setup by him. He wants his creation to help redeem his creation. Isn't that incredible to think about? God's so creative that he even used his own creation to redeem the messed up reality of his creation. Wow. That means you. And it means me. <clears throat> Colossians 3, 1 through 4, and then 10 through 17. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Verse 10. And have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the God and the Father through him. Stand with me. Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. I'm going to ask you to pray this over you. And I want some of you to go home this week and write it down and memorize it. I thank my God in all remembrance, all my remembrance of you, 
always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Paul's writing to the Philippian church, but the Holy Spirit is writing it on your heart. Don't lose hope. Don't give up. He's faithful to complete the good work he started in you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we recognize the fact that we are not perfect images of you. We are not imitators perfectly of you. We want to be, and only you, Holy Spirit, can help us to be. Lord, forgive us for the sin, forgive us for the selfishness, forgive us for just being oblivious that we are image bearers of you. Help us to remember that we're so supposed to reflect you in our world, in our families, with our friends, with our co-workers, our classmates. May we show your character of love and forgiveness and grace and kindness, all the good things that we read about you in Scripture. Help us to do it. Not just know it, not just hear it, but do it. Help us to work on our image this week. I pray a supernatural blessing on everyone here, everyone watching. In Jesus' name. Good morning. We have some Bible study opportunities. The Sunday morning adult Bible study on the book of Judges. Um, that is starting... So, it started last week. We won't have it next week, but it is available the week after. And even if you miss that, you can still come. Just catch it. It's easy. I will see Terry if you have any questions. And we have a video for a women's Bible study that will begin October 6th at 7 p.m. Uh, sign up is in the lobby, and the book is seven dollars. See Pastor Rita or Pastor Sarah for details. And the Old Testament prophets were the clarion call of God in culture. They were the ones who brought the truth of God, the standard of God, to call people back from their waywardness and back from their rebellion, to remind people that God still was who He said He was. And that he would still accomplish everything that he said he would accomplish. Do you understand that in our culture, right now in modern times, sons and daughters need to rise up in the spirit of Elijah with prophetic voices that speak truth, even when they're speaking truth to power, that do not back down, that have boldness. Oftentimes, we are looking for great men and women out there, somewhere, someone else to be that prophetic voice. But I came to tell you today that it's you. You're the one who's been called in your high school, on your university campus, in your workplace, in your neighborhood, in your circle of friends. You're the sounding board. You're the one that is supposed to be the pinprick of light and hope in the midst of the darkness. So I'm praying that this week, God gives you ears to hear what the Spirit is saying so that you can then be his mouthpiece and declare it to everyone who comes across your path. So if you're interested in that, there is a sign up in the lobby. Men, we have an event. Woo called Chainsaws and Chili. Yeah. yeah. Is it as fun as it sounds? Yes. So 
So what we're doing is it's a cleanup of the area. I don't know what you'd call it, the, the rock area behind the church. Um, we're trying to just, you know, clean that up and make it look a little nicer. That's where the chainsaws come in. And then as, I don't want to call it a bribe, but as a uh, um, encouragement for us you. to do this, um, we are being offered chili. Now, I believe we have one, two families that are making chili. There will be more, and if you'd like to make some chili, you're more than welcome to hop in on the party. Um, that will be October 23rd, starting at 9 a.m., and then we'll go until it's done. We'll have some chili, and, you know, depending on... And some chainsaws. And depending on what the guys want to do, you know, we can even throw together an event after that if, if we decide that we're still having fun and we want to keep it going. Um, if you'd like to sign up, you can talk to myself, you can talk to Pastor Sonny. Um, really not any more details other than that. Chainsaws and chili. Will we be competing a little bit? Of course, we could have competition. <laughs> sure. I think we're going to have to pay 100%. <laughs> yeah, so I tried it. Yeah, yeah, no, if you're good at that, then sure. Um, I will have to talk to Foursquare. I'm not sure if the insurance would cover that. <laughs> so uh, let us know if, if you're able. Um, we'll be here, so we'd love to have you here with us. The tithe envelopes, if you're looking for them, they are now on the, in the back by the doors. If you're um, tithing online, that still works good. If you're mailing it in, that's okay, too. That's all I got. Let's pray, and then everybody can enjoy their Sundays. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give. We pray, Lord, that you would bless it, multiply it, and direct it where it needs to go. Help us to focus on you today, Lord. Thank you for this warm weather. Thank you for the fall air. I pray, God, that you would be with us, that we would feel your presence, and that 